don't bet against Ethereum. I don't think that bet has ever worked out uh, for anyone who says that Ethereum can't fix its fragmentation because X, Y, Z. All right. I wouldn't bet against that. Um, As we draw this to a close, maybe Justin, my, my, my last question is around this. So much of the Bankless podcast has been trying to figure out what block space actually is. Certainly what crypto assets are, <laughs> but also what block space itself is. And I've seen kind of this evolution of what uh, Ethereum block space, at least on the layer one, actually does and what it contains. And again, this is like when you boil it all down to what is crypto creating, it's creating a new digital commodity called block space. And uh, you know, that we've done tons of episodes on this. But now the evolution of Ethereum block space, it sounds like we've certainly talked about it moving to settlement and data availability for chains. And now it's unleashed maybe a new role of what you're talking about here, which is also sequencing for chains. And I, I suppose that is the function of layer one block space. I mean, we could talk about in the, the full vision of everything you laid out. I mean, we've talked about what users get out of it, how builders and searchers evolve and how validators uh, evolve and how rollups uh, evolve and, and change. But what about block space, Ethereum block space? Does it become settlement and DA? Does it become sequencing for all of the chains? Is that its role as a commodity? Right, so I think what you're pointing out to is that block space is a is a complex thing which has multi, multiple constituent components to it. One of them is data availability, another one is settlement, another one is sequencing, and yet another one is execution. And I think one of the nice things about the, 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 the modular thesis is that we can try and tackle each one of them in, individually and you know, really optimize, optimize for each. Now, one of the advantages of the monolithic thesis is that you know, all of these are under one shared, shared um, um, umbrella. And the, the nice thing about Ethereum is that we can start tapping into both, both of these. And you know, maybe one word that you could say kind of unites both is the integrated thesis, right? We have modular components, but they're all integrated under one umbrella. Now, one of the interesting things is, you know, can you start providing uh, shared sequencing without necessarily sharing the data availability layer? And I think the answer is is yes, but it's not as, as, as clean necessarily. So, for example, what you can start uh, doing is having validiums and optimiums, you know, start plugging in uh, to, to this shared sequencer. But now you start entering edge cases. Okay, what if one chain reverts, but not, not, not the other? Um, and this brings us to, to the concept of, of shared security, right? There's this very nice thing that when you're under one umbrella, you're, you're, you're sharing security. It's not like you have multiple modules and you base, your, your net security is the security of the weakest link. Right? And so I think one, one of the, the value propositions of Ethereum is that it gives you the option to minimize your security assumptions. Right? Security assumptions are a bad thing. You don't want to have too many of them. The more you buy into security assumptions, the more brittle your system becomes. And one of the things that I'm hopeful of is that the real bottleneck fundamentally for scalability is, 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 is data availability. And I'm hopeful that this will largely go, go away as, as a bottleneck. I'm hopeful that eventually Ethereum can be the data availability for, for, for the whole world. And the, the way that I think about it here is um, in terms of going beyond full dank sharding, right? Full dank sharding somehow presupposes that, you know, we've reached the end game, it's, it's full dank sharding. But actually what we're having is we have a law called Nielsen's law, which basically says that the amount of bandwidth grows 50% per year. And the, there's, there's good reasons to believe that Nielsen's law will, will continue for a long time, you know, at least a decade, maybe several decades. And part of the reason is that bandwidth is this embarrassingly parallel thing, right? You can just send more photons through, just have more, more, 
you know, more fiber optic cables. I mean, it turns out that a single fiber optic cable can go can have like an insane amount of information pass through it. So you don't even you don't even need that. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that with clever engineering, a lot of the bottlenecks that we're suffering today, things like uh, disk I/O on on GEF, things like state bloat, things like verification of execution, all of these things go away, and you you're kind of left with the one fundamental bottleneck, which is bandwidth. And when you combine Dank sharding with Nielsen's law that compounds over 10 years, we're in a position, we'll be in a position where we can do 10 million transactions per second on Ethereum. It sounds insane, but this is where we're, where we're heading, 10 million transactions per second. And that's enough for every single person on earth to do 100 transactions per day. In my opinion, this, you know, that's enough, right? And so we'll be in a position where the whole internet of value can be in one place with shared security. Under the hood, there's these modules, but these are integrated modules. And we only buy into one security assumption, which is that Ethereum is secure. And this brings us to you know, trying to grow the economic security of Ethereum. Right now, we are at $70 billion, which is extremely good. It's 29 million ETH times the price of ETH. But you know, I'm hopeful that we'll get to a trillion dollar of economic security or even trillions of dollars, at which point you know, we'll have unquestionable security even against nation states. And we'll be in a position where you know, the internet of value is unquestionably secure and it's just unquestionably the, the place where everything happens. To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.